So with our new mobile world, some of this mobile world might be connected. Some of it might not be. You know, if you have an iPad that doesn't have a, an LTE modem in it and you're not paying the service, how do you connect it? Well, you can uh, use a, you know, a hotspot on your phone or whatnot, but Open Garden has a mesh network that takes it a lot further and uh, can actually join devices together. We're going to hear about it all right now. And who are you? I am uh, Misha Benoliel, co-founder and CEO of Open Garden. And I have been a technology entrepreneur uh, for the last 10 years and uh, always dream to uh, be connected and remain connected all the time on the go. And that's why I founded this company two years ago with my co-founders to uh, make mobile internet ubiquitous. Very cool. Well, we, you know, we haven't really seen a new networking protocol or scheme for a while. I, you know, I've seen some in the labs like at Park, at Xerox Park. Uh, they had something that's a mesh network that would do something similar to you, but why, what, what does it do and why do people need it, I guess is the question. So how, how mesh network, the first thing is uh, it works in the background. It's a, it's a mobile application, so you just need to install the application on every device. So that means your laptop, your Android phone, your tablet. And when these devices are in proximity, they will interconnect completely seamlessly. You don't have to do anything and then they will be able to access the, the internet jointly. So a very uh, simple example is you have your Android phone, your Android tablet, you leave home. With Open Garden, when you want to go on the web with your tablet, automatically the tablet, if there is no Wi-Fi available, will take connectivity from your phone completely seamlessly. And the same with your laptop. Um, the great thing is it even improves and makes your internet faster because you can bundle several access to the internet. That means your 3G with Wi-Fi or 4G with Wi-Fi. And if you have friends and co-workers nearby with the application, then you can all participate to improve the connectivity. Well, that's interesting too. What, why does somebody need this? Because I, I, I'm trying to find the product to market fit here because uh, most people, they have one phone or they have one phone and a tablet or one phone and a laptop. And uh, I don't know that they need, uh, that they perceive they need a mesh network. So what, what does this get you that, that uh, you can't get with just a Wi-Fi hotspot? So there are two main reasons, and that's what we noticed with uh, our first minimal viable product. Um, so what first is when you want to enable a, a hotspot on your mobile device, the first obstacle is it costs you money. You have to pay an extra 20 to $30 a month. Yep. It's completely free with Open Garden. And the second thing we've noticed is when people want to enable the Wi-Fi hotspot, you have to pass through a lot of hooks to enable it. Uh, then you have to look for the network on the other device you want to connect. Open Garden removes completely all these obstacles and make the connectivity completely seamless. So once the app is installed, you forget about it and it will do the job. So you, why, do you, why do you say it's free? Because I, I still need one of my devices to have the, the data plan, right? So we say it's free, and the exact definition is you are free to use your mobile data plan the way you want. You can use the data you pay for, for your phone, for your laptop, or your tablet. Oh, okay, completely so, it, so it adds on uh, networking features uh, without you having to turn on the uh, hotspot feature? The on tethering your option. Uh, okay. And how does it do that? Uh, and how do you get around the carrier's rules of uh, wanting, they want you to spend the $30 on the Wi-Fi hotspot? So I think the carriers are pretty divided on that. Some carriers who have a very good network actually love us because we are a way to uh, increase uh, data usage. And some others who are more conservative uh, see us as a threat. But I think it's just like at the beginning of voice over IP. Take the example of Skype. At the beginning, all the carriers were blocking Skype and now you can use Skype on any network. Interesting. So uh, um, can we see it and uh, see sure. and talk about what you get when you actually set it up? So you have it running on these three So here we have a devices. set of devices and uh, the blue dot here is the Galaxy tablet. And you can see that this tablet is connected to the two phones we have, uh, the Galaxy yeah. and also my uh, HTC phone here. Okay. And uh, that means that now any of these devices can access the internet using other device connectivity. 
So the tablet can bundle the access of these two devices plus the Wi-Fi. This uh, phone, if it doesn't have any uh, coverage from the carrier, can use the connectivity of the local Wi-Fi of or of the my this phone, which is on another carrier network. Okay. So it's really about improving and uh, making your internet faster, your mobile internet faster. Can I see any statistics about how much traffic is going through each so, one of these? So here you have a Sparkling. I might care about that in Europe, right? Where I'm paying a lot yes. for my data. So here you have a Sparkling that shows you that there is activity and you can see the data that has flowed through that device here so you have an, an, a number. We, um, for, for now, we really want to expand the network so there is no uh, control feature because it yep. would just limit the, the expansion of the network. But in the future, we will introduce some uh, features where users will be able to have more control of who access their network and who they want to share with who they want to share their, their data. Okay, and this is a free app. And so, how do you guys make money? Because with a networking scheme, I'm not so sure how, how you're going to make a company out of this. So it's a it's a completely uh, free app. It's available on the Android, uh, on Google Play, on our website also for Mac and uh, and Windows, and um, it. The way we are going to monetize with the, the users is by providing new features which gives them access to more settings and uh, like a faster speed, more security, more control over the app, uh, so the premium features. So it, it, I noticed you have a Google Glass as well and Google Glass uh, relies on my cell phone for the connectivity. What, what advantages can you bring to Google Glass when you use this mesh networking capability? So the first thing we had to do when we received the Google Glass, first we were very excited to, to receive it and being among the first one to get one. And uh, the first thing you have to do when you activate your Google Glass, and you probably notice the process, it asks you to activate the tethering plan on your phone. Yeah, it cost so me $30 more a month to do that. Exactly, yeah. so that's the first, and you have to call the carrier. Very often you're gonna spend half an hour to an hour on the phone to activate the plan. Yep. That is gonna cost you uh, so $30 a month. And then after that you realize maybe you wanna just use Bluetooth because of the battery consumption, so you have to pair your, your glass with your, your smartphone. So all this process costs you a lot of time, a lot of money. And what Open Garden does, it removes all that. So we did a hack uh, installing Open Garden on the Google Glass, and uh, when you have your glass and you are nearby another device with Open Garden, so your phone or a tablet or the laptop, then automatically the glass will join the network and connect. That's nice. That's very yeah, nice. it's pretty neat. That's very nice. Uh, how hard was this to do, and, and w what makes this different than just a standard TCP IP network? So it's an overlay network, um, and uh, there we, we really had to pass through a lot of hooks to first, one, the first obstacle was, was how do you make all these devices interconnect without user intervention? So we found a way to avoid pairing discoverability that make the devices, when they are in proximity, to recognize themselves. So that was a big, uh, a big development, uh, a very part important development for us. Um, and then we uh, we built an overlay network. That means it, it's uh, you don't see the local network. It's just an off ramp to the internet. And my team is really uh, expert into building internet protocols. We have, I mean, a stellar team of engineers. Stanislav, my CTO, did the Leadbat uh, protocol, which mm -hmm. is used by um, BitTorrent and Apple. So it's responsible, I think, for 15 to 20 percent of the internet traffic today. Very cool. How, um, what's the battery life on this? Uh, does it use any battery on, on the devices? And, and if, if not, why not? So the impact on battery has the app is really marginal, so you don't, you don't notice it, ex except if you are using one of the radios, like any other software. Um, but the interesting thing with the mesh is, imagine you are full on battery and I'm low on battery. Yeah. Uh, with my phone and I want to check my emails. If you have Open Garden and I have Open Garden, instead of using my expensive Link uh, 4G or 3G, uh, I could just use my Bluetooth to connect to you and use then the, your 4G radio and uh, I would save on battery because the Bluetooth uh, radio is like 30 to 40 times less expensive in uh, energy consumption. Is the algorithm smart enough to know that one of the devices is dying? So we, we, we started to work on that. Okay. And it's definitely that's something that's going to be part of the protocol. That's getting to be contextual when it starts to be aware, very aware at, at every level of who has bandwidth out and, and, and who, who has, has battery. battery. Exactly. Um, I noticed you don't show me any iOS devices. Does Apple not let you do this kind of stuff? I, I assume that on Android it's more open so you can talk to the 
Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth radios and on Apple, they, they don't let developers talk to you. Is that true? So Android is more open. That's why we started on Android. Uh, we want to go and be on iOS. More and more users request uh, now up and garden on iOS. Um, so it's going to take time. But we believe we will definitely be on iOS. It may take a, a year or two or three. Can uh, you technically do it as Apple exists today? Because app, other developers have told me they don't get to talk to the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi radios, which I think you need, don't you, to build this kind of really nice So nice we, need, we need access to uh, the Bluetooth interface, to the Wi-Fi interface. From a hardware standpoint, you can do anything on an, I on an iPhone. Okay. Uh, from what's available in terms of APIs, then it's, it's limited. But I mean, Apple is updating their, their OS very often. And, uh, well, totally that's one area I'm definitely going to be watching at the WWDC this summer. Does Apple open up? Because uh, a lot of the contextual apps rely on, uh, on having that full, full bore access to the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi mm -hmm. radios. Uh, indoor positioning needs it, and this is pretty interesting in, in terms of the technology. Um, tell me about the company. How, how are you funded, and how many people are working on this? So the company started two years ago. We are seven people. We have reached for now 2.5 million installs of, uh, of our softwares. Uh, we we uh, raised the seed round of $2 million, and uh, we are recruiting more engineers on Android iOS also, uh, and um, so if anyone is interested, just go onto our website. Yeah, Bluetooth works what uh, thirty feet away, and Wi-Fi works a hundred yards away, maybe, or yeah, not in my house, even less than that, right? It depends the environment where you are. Yeah, if you have a clear shot without yeah. any walls. But Bluetooth there. can be more than thirty feet. Yeah, and I, um, in your usage of it, what what does it really bring to your screen that that couldn't be possible any other way? Is it saving money? Is it is it? Uh, it's convenience of uh, of use, saving money and convenience of use. I mean, it's. Uh, I just uh, open my laptop. I am in a cafe. No Wi-Fi. I don't need to take my phone out of my bag or my pocket. It will just connect to my phone. It's very easy. And uh, when we start to have more density, then you we will start to see a network effect. Uh, and what we want is the. To have more and more people now joining the network to improve improve the overall network, so it's a. Could that matter at a big event? Like I'm going to Google I/O tomorrow, and there's going to be I don't know eight thousand people in a room. A lot of times, when you have that kind of density of, of geeks with three or four devices on them, the the whole network just stops working. We've seen that several times. Does this potentially help uh, in high density situations like that, like at a baseball game or a computer conference? So it's a p the perfect application when there is density to improve connectivity. Because when you take an event like uh, Google I.O. or any other event, some people, not everyone is on the same carrier network first. So uh, you can use the capacity, the all the available capacity according to that space. So you can uh, use the data of your carrier, but also the one of other people. And then you can access the Wi-Fi. And if there are private Wi-Fi, you can access to this network by hopping onto other people's devices who have access to that private Wi-Fi. So it is um, increasing the available capacity, actually. Very cool. Is there any way to pass files back and forth? You know, if I take pictures with my glass, I have to wait to get home for them to upload to uh, my Google Plus account, or now I have a Facebook app and a Twitter app, and I can share from here, but I have to wait a little bit of time. Is there any way for you to see all the files on my glass and have it show up on my tablet, for instance? So like I said before, it's just an off-ramp to the internet. In the future, um, we, uh, we want to open uh, maybe the architecture uh, and the network to enable some application to take advantage of the local mesh. So to enable like texting or tweeting within a closed environment, uh, this kind of things. Um, and it can be file exchange. But it's, 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 it's later down the road. We're not there okay. yet. Yeah, it, it, it might make sense because uh, so many people are getting so, so many devices and you want them to uh, have a sort of a new kind of Dropbox that sits on top and be really pretty interesting. Where do I learn more about, uh, about your company? On our website, opengarden.com. Yep, opengarden.com, spelled just the way it is. Just the way it is. Don't need to take any vowels out of it. No. Thank you so much for coming in Thank and showing this Thank to you. me. And, uh, Thanks for the Google uh, Glass hack, because that, that'll help me get online as well. Thank you.